Hey Sewing Bees, I'm Suki and in today's video I'm going to show you how to insert piping with a serger. And just so you know, this was pre-recorded from one of our Live at the Beehive shows. Exact way that I do piping with my serger. Let me show you kind of the goal is to have the piping inserted into the seam and then all finished. And in this case we did a four thread overlock. Now I'm going to show this in a moment and you'll be able to see the stitches much better on the camera, but that's kind of the goal is to have this right inside that in that piping inserted. So now what is piping? Well, piping is a piece of fabric and cording. So when you marry fabric and cording, you get piping. Now, there's um, the first thing I want to talk about is you are going to need a presser foot for your serger. I will be talking about that when I get over to the stitch cam, but depending on which kind of foot you have, what size it is, I really, if you can get one that goes up to a five millimeter, I really like that size for my cording. You want to always start with your cording wrapped with some tape. So let's just, this is usually when you buy cording at the store. And I do have a link in the description for if you want to buy cording by the by the uh, the spool. I don't even. I think it's like a hundred yards. If you plan on doing a lot of cording, that might be more cost effective. But if you're just going to the store and buying a couple of yards, they usually wrap it with a piece of tape and then cut it. So the first thing is, I usually do have my cording just slightly bigger than my material, and then I'm just going to wrap it with a piece of clear tape. Nothing fancy, just good old scotch tape and then I am with a pair of sharp scissors I'm just going to cut right down the center and now this way I have my piece ready my next piece of cording ready for my next piece of piping <clears throat> now seam allowance is going to be a, a big thing with your serger usually when you're making a project any project the pattern will tell you what your seam allowance is in my patterns for my serger projects the seam allowance for creating your own piping is about 3 8 inch. So what I've done is I have a piece of fabric that is 1 and 3 8 inch wide. That seems to be the perfect size to go with my 5 millimeter cording. So now here is the really super cool trick. You're going to want to get yourself some of this stuff called Wonder Tape. It is a wash away double sided adhesive tape but it has this paper on the outside so that you can adhere the underside of the adhesive first and then peel it off. So you're gonna need to have a piece down, so this is gonna be, I know this is black, but pretend that this is the wrong side. So wrong side facing up, and you're going to place that wonder tape right down the center. And then you're going to peel it off. Now I've had some questions about, I have, you know, people will say, I have troubles getting that, that tape and the paper off, how do I do that? So I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks on how to do that this evening. But that's the first place that you put the wonder tape. So you put it right down the center on the wrong side. Then the next is you put a second piece right on the top raw edge and then just press it down and you can go ahead and tear your paper away. I find that if you tear it away, you'll sometimes get this little like tattered edge and you see how the tape, the, the actual adhesive right here, just it's just really easy. I'm going to be able to pull that one away real easy. Even this one right here, do you see how I tore it? So I can kind of see the beginning of the adhesive and I'll be able to get my finger underneath there and grab hold of it. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks on how to remove the adhesive though. The first is those, those um, angled precision tweezers. We have them from Suki Sews. It looks kind of like a little ankle, like a little foot sitting straight. So if you treat it like a little foot and you go at the end right here and just kind of smush on it, smush, that's a real, that's a real technical word. <laughs> Sometimes that is all you need in order to peel away the paper, just like that. The other thing you can do is because of the angled on those tweezers, you can kind of get right inside there and help divide, or I guess separate the paper from the adhesive. So that's another thing you can do. But really you can use the end of anything. You could use the end of a pair of scissors, your fingernail, I mean whatever you can 
get in there. But I really do like the tweezers, the little angled part, because I am able to get in there real easily. Okay, so now you're gonna you're gonna put it in the center and on the top, and now you're gonna peel away the center. I'm gonna show you another trick on how to remove that paper as well. But we've now got the center adhesive exposed and we're gonna place the cording right down the center and we're just gonna kind of finger press that into place. All right, now it's time to remove the top piece of paper and we're gonna sandwich this down and it'll, it'll kind of encase that cording inside there and that little adhesive top will go to the bottom and it'll be nice and smooth and perfect and ready for us to, to use in our serger. But I'm gonna show you a trick. Now I actually learned this from one of my students this past week and I promised her, her name was Carol. I said, may I borrow this? I have to share this with my, my friends online. So she showed me that if you take that extra piece and you, you leave it a little bit longer. So you see about, it's about a half inch extra beyond the edge of my fabric fold the adhesive onto itself. So we've got the paper going around, so the adhesive is on itself. And now when you grab hold of the paper, the adhesive sticks to itself and makes it really easy to remove the paper. So when she showed that, I thought, oh, that's the coolest thing. So I wanted to share that with you all. So now there's the top adhesive, and all we're gonna do is just fold it over and sandwich that cording inside that fabric and so now we have piping so we've got the thickness of our five millimeter piping right sandwiched inside there so now we're going to get our pieces of material and we're going to put them right sides together and traditionally what you would do is you'd wrap the cording around or excuse me you'd wrap the fabric around the cording just like this and you would go through the serger and you would serge all the way down. But what does that do? Well, one, it takes time. But the other thing it does is now you've got this serge seam all the way down, and then you'd be taking that serge seam, putting it inside here, and then adding a second serge seam. So this not only re reduces time, but it also reduces the bulk of that extra stitch in there. So now we've got right side facing up, we have the raw edge, and we've got our piping with a cording toward the center. And we're just gonna lay that on the edge, all raw edges together, and we've got right sides together. And we're going to just use some wonder clips to help hold this in place. And that measurement that I mentioned, your, your piping fabric is gonna be cut at an inch and three-eighths. And if you use that with the five-eighths inch the, excuse me, the five millimeter cording, it just works out really, really good. Okay, my sewing bees, so that's what we've got. And now, Bear, let's go ahead. I'm gonna grab my snips and we're gonna head over to Stitch Cam and we're gonna stitch this up. Okay, so first, now tonight I have a different serger. I've got the Bernina L460, but you do need a cording foot. There is, the because a regular foot is just gonna be too flat and it will smush, it will mat down that cording, that, the you know, the, the the bump of the, the cording that's inside there. So a true cording foot, sometimes you'll see them called piping feet. It just depends on your manufacturer. So whatever brand you have, you can look it up on their website or you can also um, ask your local dealer. But do you see the groove that's underneath here? And I can kind of just show you with my nail is gonna go inside that groove. Are you able to see that bear? Yeah. All right, cool. And then that's pretty much it. You're gonna just put your cording, the, the, the cording will be underneath where that little groove is. So let me put that presser foot back on. Now I just have a regular traditional four thread overlock set up on this serger. The blade is going up and down. My width on this particular serger is set for about six. So that means that the distance from the left needle to where it's gonna cut is six millimeters. And remember my my cording is five millimeters. So that's gonna be a teeny tiny extra amount just for the seam allowance to pop open. So I wanted to show you too, the reason that I like to leave a little extra of my cording here is so that I can get it started. And that way, by the time I have put all my seams together, it stitches really nicely. So if you have that luxury of starting and giving yourself a little extra, do that. 
The other thing too is you can lift your presser foot up and you can kind of feed the cording underneath there. And I can go pretty far in, up and up underneath the presser foot, just making sure that everything's gonna land good. Lower the presser foot. And we're gonna get started. The wonder clips are always a good option when you're using a serger because they're bright and you're not going to accidentally, like if my wonder clip was right here still, the machine just would stop sewing, right? Because it's going to hit the presser foot. But they're also like little flashlights, like, hey, ho, oh, don't forget me. So you can easily see them. Because you've got that blade going up and down, it's always recommended that you avoid using straight pins on your serger, though, just as a, a friendly reminder. <clears throat> And then two is another reminder, because you have that blade, that blade is going up and down, you can take advantage of that and use that to cut your thread tail. You could also use, usually on the side of sergers or sewing machines, there's a little thread cutter, but you can also use the little thread snips, and these are definitely my, my little go-to thread snips. And so now let's do our little grand reveal, and there is our beautiful cording inside the inside the material and so we've created piping and it's done in all in one step there's no extra steps you had to create once again this recording came from one of our live at the beehive shows thanks so much for watching and until i see you next time i hope you have a creative day Bye bye